what can I do when I have four temp sensors not found? Um, well, it's almost always a chip issue. Uh, so when you don't have any temp sensors found, um, and I, I assume the whole thing is, is uh, green or is it red? Uh, if it's all green, well, two, two things still, you can jump. So jumping until you get temp sensors showing on your advanced test. Or uh, if it's all red, again, I believe you should be seeing some weak RX or you should be seeing some noise on your BI at some point. So really looking at those two um, is, is, should be helpful, especially if you have the four temp sensors dead because the four are embedded on 17 series into your um, ASIC chip circuit. And so for sure, the four temp sensors aren't dead. So for sure, it's something somewhere that's not transmitting correctly. And most of the transmission, the data transmission is done to the return signal. So it's the, the, the last chip sending over all of the, back to all the, um, through all the chips, back to the control board. So this one, I would have a look to. Um, if your RX itself is good, Maybe have a look at your CT1F uh, converters right there, U1, U2. Um, those two chips can be tricky and are very critical for a well-functioning uh, return signal and, and for the transmission to the control board. And so make sure that, uh, or to your tester. So make sure that your CT1F are working, U1, U2, and make sure that your RX and BI isn't uh, you know, sick anywhere on the board. Michelle is saying some some eat the chip from bottom. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I do sometimes. Um, I'll do that trick mostly. Well, I'll do it when I want to have really you know clean installs. And so personally, I'm a bit of a perfectionist sometimes. So when I install the capacitors that are right there, uh, I like like I, I don't like it when you see the distinction between the legs from the capacitor and the the pads, right? So I'll put a good amount of tin. With my um, uh, with my iron, and then I'll eat a bit from bottom with a bit of flux, and it, it's gonna do those very gradual, super shiny, super roundy uh, legs that are really merged together and re really solid and and great looking. So it's I use it mostly for aesthetics. Other than that, I will eat from bottom mostly on the latest gens. So again, 19 series, D7, L7, uh, the boards are more thicker, the soldering is more, is more hard to work with. Um, so I'll, if it's possible, if it's on the, you know, the uh, um, borders of the board, if it's in the center, uh, at the moment I don't have a proper setup to eat on the center of the board and, you know, place my board and, and know that this chip is getting the eat. So I need to look under and so I'll do it on the sides of the board. Um, so it's it's working great. I have nothing uh, against or for it. Um, it's it's especially great when you have a soldered part that's really well soldered, and you need to apply heat, and you don't want to infect the surrounding areas. Uh, same goes if you have, say, for instance, here we have the IO port that's a plastic plug. Maybe you want to work that area here. Maybe you remove a resistance or a capacitor right there. Um, we're, uh, eating from bottom is better because you're gonna get that heat go through the PCB and to the parts so you so the, the the solder melts you remove the part you need to remove without hurting the the plastic part that's not gonna be able to handle that kind of heat so yeah that's it